so now we're gonna we're gonna do like an intro kind of thing. Do an intro. Okay. Right, I, you want me? To, I got one. I, uh, you got one? I think oh, I can... you want to do it? Okay, yeah. I'm ready. Right. I'm ready. Okay. Well, I, got, I got your back if you don't have it. Perfect. Okay, yeah. let's see how this goes. All right. Welcome back to Battle School Dropouts, playing the greatest in smooth jazz from 80s, 90s, and beyond. My name is Bakri, and I am joined by soprano saxophone virtuoso Stewie G. Hey, what's going on, people? <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. That Thank was you. Perfect. Really yeah, perfect. excellent. Yeah, people understand the podcast. Podcast is now. done. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So, welcome to Battle School Dropouts. We're an anime podcast. Yep. We just watched six episodes of Gargantia on the Verduris planet. Uh, my name is Bakari, and I'm Stu. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about those in a little bit. But first off, how you doing? I'm doing great. You really nailed that intro. <laughs> Thank I'm you. Really impressed. You. I, was, I was like running it through my head, like, okay, how are we going to introduce the show? How are we going to do all that stuff? And it's like, no, you, you fucking nailed it. Well, you know, yeah. you know what the kids love nowadays: <laughs> smooth jazz. Smooth jazz. That's the big thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, what is lo-fi hip hop to chill slash study to if not smooth jazz? It is kind of just because I like. <laughs> I'm a. I, I grew up a jazz musician. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I played drums and jazz bands and all this stuff all the way through like from pretty much middle school through college and you know so naturally i grew up hating kenny g <laughs> but i love that 24 7 lo-fi chill hop to relax slash study to bullshit yeah i love it did you see that it got like it taken got taken down, down for a second and, and so it... it's the longest youtube video in history yeah it's... yeah people were doing the math they were like like the study girl like could have gotten like two doctorates <laughs> uh, you know just learned like eight different languages i mean she was she was studying non-stop non-stop yeah she doesn't even sleep <laughs> nor i mean or chill really you know what yeah she's not chilling yeah she's, she's just not. studying yeah just the study side of that slide there was another there's another one of those uh stations and they use a very similar photo but it's um it's of hana from the movie wolf children ame and yuki and I, i've seen that movie and so i realized like she's not chilling she is studying I'll mm-hmm. give her that, but she's not relaxing. She's not yeah. chilling. It's kind of a stressful thing because, like, she just she has two children who are part werewolf, and her <laughs> her husband is dead. So, like, she doesn't know how to take care of them. Have you seen that movie? No, it's very good. Yeah, um, but a, yeah, not a very relaxing, not a very chill movie. No. It sounds like yeah. yeah, no, that's kind of the the thing about like lo-fi music on uh, YouTube is it's kind of just like, well, here's a cute gif of an anime girl in the fucking early nineties, eighties. Like, sure. Whenever well, Whisper I'll just of the play Heart this came very, out. very short clip over and over, like, um, and it's just over and over, and it's like, oh, so you're just gonna, just a thousand times on this video. They okay. just know you're not gonna cool. look at it. Nor yeah, should you. Nor should you. Yeah, it's fine. But yeah, there's very little context. Like, I see it, I'm like, I wonder what show that is. Yeah. I'll never know. Uh, so what have you been playing lately? What have you been, what have you been doing for fun? So I've been playing a lot of things recently. Um, I've mentioned this to you before many times. I have a problem with impulse buying games. Yep. Um, there's like a PlayStation sale constantly. Uh, <laughs> and you know, I used to make fun of people and their vices back before I had like money and things like that. And I was just like, you know, oh, people get addicted to shopping. That's so stupid. Like just buying things. Like what are you going to do with it? And now I have so many games on my PlayStation <laughs> that I don't even like. And yeah, it's just the worst. But um, so I bought <laughs> what, all those games. What, by the way, what a, I really feel for you, dude. What a problem to have. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, definitely. Like <laughs> an awful thing. <laughs> My sympathies go out to you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's really hard, you know. Yeah. Um, but I've I bought a bunch of games on the PlayStation, and so naturally I'm playing Sonic Adventure on Steam. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, I had this conversation with somebody, a fellow Sonic fan, mm. um, for. Okay, let's not be presumptuous. I'm sure anybody listening to this episode knows us and knows that I'm a big Sonic fan, but let's just say yeah. for the folks at home, I'm a big Sonic fan. It's a very, very, like, that's an understatement. Yeah. Very, I've always loved Number one Sonic fan. Well, I don't know about number one. Not number but... one. Okay. Uh, I, I've seen some things, too. I'm not number uh, one. Yeah. But I'm a big fish in a little pond here. You gotta yeah. understand. <laughs> Um, but no, so I was talking with a fellow Sonic fan, we were talking about the adventure games, and I mentioned to him, like, oh, yeah, like, I really, really loved those games as a teenager, but, like, I tried playing them not too long ago, I played DX, and I played, um, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, and they just don't hold up that well. And he said, well, it's because those ports are bad. Like, there's a ton of glitches and, like, visual shit that, like, got fucked up, 
in the transfer. And I hadn't had a Dreamcast since I was like 13, so I don't remember. Yeah. Um, but I went and I found a pack of mods that basically restore Sonic Adventure Director's Cut back to its like Dreamcast state. I just always assumed that game was, because I've only recently played it on Steam, mm-hmm. so I just assumed that game was always janky. No, I mean, it's it's still kind of janky, but like not nearly as much as that would leave you believe. Really? Like, okay. yeah, because I remember playing it on GameCube and thinking like, wow, I guess this just sucks. And now, like, playing it again, I'm like, oh, no, this actually feels good to move around in, and, like, it looks nice and all this stuff. Um, I mean, naturally, like, their, their faces still do the thing, and you yeah. can't, can't fix the voice acting, you know? So, <laughs> oh, no. But, um, oh, no. <laughs> but, yeah, that's been, a, that's been a really good time. I just beat, I just beat the, the Sonic segment of it, and now I'm playing Tails, and uh, it's, it's been great. I love the music, and it's, it's fun to run around in, and the game doesn't tell you where to go at all, but there's no. little... There's little uh, Ghost Rider looking things, not the skeleton guy. I mean, like Ghost Rider, the Nickelodeon show with the little ghost that oh, writes things on the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's wow, a topical, cut. topical wow. reference. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a little, blue, a little ball of light, and it'll, it'll tell you where to go next, and that's the only way you can possibly know. Yeah, yeah. no, because I, I think I played that game on stream mm-hmm. a while back, and I remember like I got through like the first level. I was like, okay, cool. What? Like, what do I do now? Like, <laughs> Like, really struggled through that one. Uh, to call, I'll tell you. You go to the Mystic Ruins, and then you go to Windy Valley, and it's just a great old time. Yeah, I remember. I think I got through Windy Valley, and then I was like, uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, and the... then I jumped over to Sonic Adventure 2, I mm, think. Right. And there's the, the Knuckles levels, and those are a fucking nightmare, where you have to, like, dig up uh, items. Yeah. And, uh, well, I, you know, I never played that before. So, like, <laughs> the there's, like, I guess there's, like, tender, like, you have to dig up, like, say, three and there's, like, ten different spots they can be in. Yeah. And so you just gotta, like, no or solve riddles. Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck that. Well, so you got the bad. radar. It, like, tells you when you're getting closer. Yeah, but some of the, like, the fucking, there's, like, a pumpkin level? Pump, Halloween level? Pumpkin Hill, yeah. Pumpkin Hill. Yeah. Yeah, that level's huge. It's very big. That's not even the biggest one. Meteor uh, Herd, it's in space, <laughs> and it's, like, Mario Galaxy status where there's, like, floating asteroids everywhere, and you have to, like... It's so big. I can't, dude. It's I can't. so big. Yeah, no. Banging well, soundtrack it, though. <laughs> Knuckles, Knuckles brought his bars on Sonic Adventure Yeah, too. yeah, because it's all like rap. Yeah, for Knuckles. Yeah, right? um, yeah. Hunted P is the name of the rapper who did that. Yeah, that's honestly, you know, I'm I'm impressed. I I feel like I can do a deep cut just because I know Crush Forty. Sure, sure. Like, I like that's that's my one. Like, who I know a little <laughs> bit about Sonic. You know, Crush Forty. Yeah, got to love him. Got to love him. Jin Senoue is a. Uh, just a magical man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Crush 40 did the Sonic Heroes theme. They right? sure did. That's that's like the one that gets stuck in my head the most. Really? That's yeah. that's your Wait, are you talking about the, like the main theme like Sonic Heroes the, Yeah, the, like okay. the Sonic Heroes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, like that's stuck in my head. Cuz there's that time. and there's what I'm made of which is like another main theme. So. Oh yeah, no that one doesn't come to mind. <laughs> uh, I don't know that one at all. I think you have to beat the game to hear it, so, you know. That's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've ever beaten the Sonic game. They're short. They're, yep. they're not that long. No. <laughs> that that shows you my patience so, with Sonic games. I've got to re- really reconsider this whole situation. <laughs> too. Listen, this is not a Sonic podcast. This <laughs> not is an yet. anime podcast. Not yet. We will, we will talk about anime. So eventually. join us next time when we watch the 1990s <laughs> Sonic OVA where Knuckles wears a fedora. It's going to be great. Next week we're going to watch all of uh, Sonic Underground and we're going to talk about that. Oh, perfect. I shouldn't make those kind of promises. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't write checks you can't cash. Too. I will absolutely watch that. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck that. No. No, can't. So that's what I've been playing. What have you? What have you been on? Um, I've been on. I'm. I'm on. I'm ready for Doom Eternal. Uh-huh. Like it's been a few years since it's been like. I need to play this game. Like this game that isn't out yet. Like I feel like a kid. <laughs> like I'm like, why isn't the game out? Like I'm yeah. counting down the days. It's that feeling you know? like waiting for Christmas kind of thing. Yeah. I don't like. I like Doom, but like. I could wait another year to play it. That's fine. But Animal Crossing comes yeah. out on the same day, so you know we both got our. March 20th is going to be a big day. Yeah, like that's, and that's what I really like, right? Like the, the vibe that's in the non political world right now <laughs> is like, uh, that everyone is excited about Doom or, or Animal Crossing mm-hmm. in, the, in the world. And I don't know anybody who's like, yeah, I don't care about either of those games. Like it's yeah. kind of hitting like both demographics. It covers a lot of bases, Animal Crossing and Doom. Yeah. And, and it's nice that it's not like, like they're also hitting like different audiences, I think. <laughs> so there's no fighting. It's just kind of like, like, I love, love all of the memes that oh, are, yeah. like, combining <laughs> the two of them. The Doom Guy and Isabel, just, mm-hmm. it's so wholesome. There, there's a really simple one where it's just, like, Doom Guy 
putting on his helmet and it like the Animal Crossing text box pops up and it's just like rip and tear until it's done with a little <laughs> Animal Crossing voice. It's adorable. It's like three seconds and it's yeah. my favorite thing. I was I was telling you this earlier, we've been seeing a lot of like Isabel with a shotgun or whatever. Mm-hmm. I need to watch Doom Guy go go fishing. Yeah. And chatting with uh with Bob and Roald and all his little animal buddies. Yeah, yeah, because you know? I, I feel like the, the closest I've seen is like Animal Crossing New Horizons footage. Like, right. With the Doom soundtrack over it. Which is also good. Yeah, it's it's great. It, some of those videos work really well. Definitely. Um, Should do like a like a track swap, just like have <laughs> Kazumi Totaka do a Doom track and yeah. then whoever composed for Doom do uh, a Animal Nick Crossing. Or track. Mick Gordon, something sure. like that. I've been listening to the Doom sound. Like I'm I'm nerding out on a level I haven't done in years where it's like, <laughs> oh what music should I listen to? I think I'm gonna listen to the Doom soundtrack right now. Like it's so good. Don't you remember what it feels like to care about things? Isn't it nice? Right? It is it is nice. like in these fucking dark days yeah. of like politics. Like we were just out front like talking about like, well, Biden's got dementia, like all of these terrible things are yeah, happening. Yeah, he keeps world. like touching kids too much. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> but it's like Thank God Doom and Animal Crossing are coming out. Like, I, I need it so bad. Uh, no, and like, and I just beat Doom on the second hardest difficulty. Oh, shit. Because the hardest one is just like an impossible difficulty. Right, right. But, uh, I just beat it on that, and so I'm kind of like, oh, well, what should I do? So I've got my girlfriend playing Doom now, and she's oh. into it, so I'm kind of like, what, like living vicariously through her <laughs> in this new Doom experience. You get to watch her experience these things for the first time. Yeah. It's the closest thing you'll get to experiencing it for the first time yourself. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah at this point. Because I like I booted up the game and I still have my old save file from when I beat the game. I'm like, uh, oh, it's been like three years. <laughs> I miss this so much. Yeah. That's going to be a good time. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm ready for it. Yeah. I'm very, very ready for it. 12 days as of the recording of this podcast. Yeah, so days. probably, like, it's already out by the time we release it. <laughs> likely. Extremely likely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. What else is... I was thinking about... Uh, I don't know if you're, if you're ready to answer this bombshell. I was mm. thinking, since this is our first podcast, for anybody that doesn't know us and our anime tastes... Mm. Uh, what is your favorite anime? Not an anime that you think is your is the best, but your favorite anime. And what is an anime that you hate? Oh man, that's really okay. Um, I'm gonna say uh, the anime I think is the best, or like is my favorite, favorite is my yeah. favorite. Um, really normy answer, but I really, truly, honestly love Samurai Champloo. Uh, That's a great choice. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've seen a lot more deep cut shit, so I could go, like, oh, no, and then here and there, or whatever, but, like, or <laughs> techno wise, or some shit. But, like, honestly, I love everything about Samurai Champloo the characters, the visuals, yeah. the soundtrack, the fights, everything. It's just yeah. so, so good. It's such a good package. Yeah. 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 Just yeah, a absolutely. dream combination of, like, Watanabe doing the anime and, like, New Chavez and Fat John. On the soundtrack, it's just yeah, perfect. Yeah, no, it just kind of hits you on like every every single one. Yeah, no, I love that show. Yeah, too. yeah, it's so good, it's fantastic. As far as anime, I hate. Um, I don't often like hate things that I watch. Like if I if I'm not enjoying it, I'll turn it off. I don't like hate watch it and then go like, oh, I'm gonna talk about how bad this is. Um, <laughs> Must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't have that kind of energy. I'm too. I'm too good of a person. Still. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what I'm full of hatred. It's like, <laughs> you're excited for Animal Crossing, and I'm excited for Doom. There you know? it is. It's the like two I types. have to get out my aggression. <laughs> the two genders. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. But an anime I really can't stand. Um... Oh, yeah. so I have this shit. Um, or, or, yeah, or at least don't look that way. Right. <laughs> I'm looking down to think here. Um, okay, so anime I, I really can't stand is... Oh, man, this is going to be kind of a hot take. Naruto Shippuden. Okay. I like Naruto a lot, and I even like the Naruto manga that covers those episodes, mm-hmm. but fuck, that show is so ugly. <laughs> it's just so goddamn ugly. Yeah. I, I've, I've, I've definitely been in... Uh... Like I've I've seen the smears, which is obviously not a good way to judge a show. But of course, like, I've I've also I was like, oh well, let's see the real thing. I'm like, oh, ain't much better. Yeah, ain't much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm a I'm not a Naruto fan. I mm-hmm. never jumped into it. And Naruto for a long I, I hated anime for a long time. Right. And it was because I thought every show was like Naruto, <laughs> where it's like these obnoxious voices and like 500 episodes. Right. 
It's five hundred on the dot. I'm pretty sure. So, oh shit! Yeah. Well, it's because I, I just I hate it so much. You, you know everything know about uh, it. No yeah. line enemy. That's yeah. how you work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I'm. Those are good choices. Those yeah. are good answers. Thank you. Yeah. I feel it's very normy. Like it's very like I'm someone who's watched like five animes total kind of thing. Right. But, yeah. You know, I like what I like and no, dislike. No, absolutely. Whatever. Yeah, because I mean, like there are, there are definitely like deep cuts that I enjoy. But like yeah, like as far as favorites, like like for me, I like I think my favorite anime is, is got issues, I know, but like I love Kill a Kill. Like okay. that is my like if if I have to pick a favorite show, like that's my absolute favorite. Sure. Like, it's so fun. It's got so much style. Um, it's got a lot of heart. Mm-hmm. So I yeah, I love that show. Yeah, that, that's a that, good choice. That was a show that like got me like into. Uh, like the rule of cool and stuff like that, right? right? And, and like, and that allowed me to get into other shows like Yu Yu Hakusho and um, stuff like that. That that really like that opened that that gate to me because I don't think I would have ever gotten into like shonen anime oh. if it weren't for that too. Because there's like you can like I used to be a really nitpicky like this plot hole doesn't make sense. Or this <laughs> character development is bad. Just going all like cinema sins kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like, and, you know, very pretentious about it. Sure. But at the time didn't realize it. And it was, it was shows like that. And like uh, later, like Yu Yu show that right. really got me like, Oh yeah, no Shonen, Shonen is sick. You know? <laughs> and now it's like, now I can watch like my hero and stuff like that and really enjoy this. You know, I've been watching some my hero recently. I'm like through the second season. And oh, I shit. I avoided that for a long ass time, you but did. it's it's pretty good. I I was really expecting you to say like, yeah, I'm like all the way through like episode four. No, no, I, <laughs> like, wow. I really binged it for like a week or something like yeah. that. And um, yeah, I mean, I definitely see why it has such wide appeal, mm-hmm. um, especially in the in the age of like Almighty Disney and their their Marvel movies and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's like as someone who's watched a fuck ton of Shonen, like yeah, it's just it's. Something I'm so very familiar with. It's a it's the chicken soup anime, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's not really like breaking down any anything new, but it's executing everything really, really well. Absolutely. And I think that's that's what I like these days in a show or a movie or something. Like I don't need a whole new original concept. Sure. I want something just executed well. Totally. You know. And it definitely delivers on that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think there's a lot of like um, isekai shows mm-hmm. that expect their premise to be so good that you're going to end up watching the show and, and they're not never is yeah it never is and like and you can tell <laughs> those shows because it's like what do they do in the first episode do they do something cool or do they tell you about the world in the first episode right right it's like and i've seen so many shows that do that and it's like oh yeah no i never want to see another episode of this yeah yeah, yeah. it's i feel like we're kind of on the on the end of the isekai like train you know yeah there's like a new isekai series a per season as opposed to like six so yeah. you know we're getting there yeah well because we finally hit the point where it's like i can't think of a, a good term for it so i won't try it but like where they they've started to like have a lot of like almost like a parody of it you know yeah like, like and i thought that was going to be like the immediate death of it it's like oh it's isekai but uh it's his mom or whatever and yeah like, oh, or okay. he's a pro wrestler or yeah or what have you yeah and it's like okay this means isekai has to be dead sure and it's like Oh no! It's, it's we're still getting more, and now it's like it's finally kind of petering off. <laughs> Almost, we'll get yeah. there one day. Yeah, I just like I don't know if I need another show where it's like it's an MMO, but oh no, there's <laughs> a twist, and everyone who plays it is uh, stuck or yeah. you know has dot hack was good. Hair. Yeah, I like dot hack. Yeah, no, I was obsessed with dot hack as a kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what's your what's your least favorite? I don't think you mentioned that I, one. My my hated anime is uh, Attack on Titan. Ooh, okay. Yeah, that's and and I like I have like I feel like it's like uh, like I have like a dark history with it. Because right. That's the show that got me back into anime. Right. Because yeah, uh, I feel like it did that for a lot of people. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because yeah. like um, so I like I said earlier, I hated anime for a long time. Right. And I just thought it was all garbage and all dumb. And then uh, a buddy of mine, uh, Andy, hit me up and was like, "Hey, do you want to go to an anime, attack anime at this uh, whatever it was?" And I was like, "Sure, yeah. yeah I don't want to go to work. Hanging out with my friends sounds cool. That's way better." Okay, so I, I did, and I had a wonderful time. Right. And that was like 
Attack on Titan had basically, like, the first season had just finished, oh, basically. Okay. So, like, the hype was strong. Like, mm-hmm. everyone was wearing the jacket. <laughs> they were, like, everywhere. And then we, um, they were doing, like, a showing, and we watched, um, we watched, like, the recap episode. And so it showed me what happened in the, like, in the show. And oh. I was like, oh, this is actually kind of cool. Like, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't expect any of this to happen. So, like, the next weekend, I got, like, the Crunchyroll, like, free pass for, right. like, a right. whatever amount of time. And I just watched the entire show. And I was like, <laughs> this is great. And then I got thinking about it more. And then I watched the second season. And I was like, actually... I hate this. I hate this so much. Like, it's so obsessed with the mystery of the show Mm -hmm. that it won't advance the plot or do anything or, like, do anything interesting. Like, season two has so many cliffhangers, and then the next episode starts with characters that had nothing to do with it, and the whole episode, and then we get back to that cliffhanger, it moves forward a little bit, and then we gotta have the same cliffhanger. Yeah. It's like, just... Let something happen! <laughs> it's the it's the Dragon Ball Z approach, you know? Like, the yeah. original, like, unabridged, full Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. It's like, you get, like, 30 seconds of Goku fighting whoever, and then another 23 minutes of, like, character flying towards where Goku's fighting, like, gosh, mm-hmm. I sure hope I get there in time, and then yeah. Chi-Chi looking up at the sky, like, gosh, I sure hope Goku's alright, and we just kind of <laughs> do that. And then, next episode, you get 30 more yeah. seconds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so that was, that was real rough. Um, there's a part, and I'm, I'm going to be misremembering it, but <clears throat> there's a part where something happens, they've found these people who they thought were good guys, but it turns out they're bad guys. Sure. And the protagonist is sitting there, and his, like, face is damaged, but he can, like, heal himself. Oh, okay. So he's like, why did they betray us? Why did you, know, it's like internal monologuing, and it's like, yeah, why did they, and I'm sitting there like, yeah, like, why did they do that? Like, yeah. that seems like a weird thing for these characters to do. Why did they do that? So eventually he heals up. Now, they're all stuck in, like, a tree, basically, because um, there's, like, titans underneath, and they have to, like, wait for, like, nightfall or something. Right. So eventually his mouth heals, and he's still sitting there like, why did they do this? Why did, I'm like, just ask them. They're right there. You have nothing else to do. <laughs> like, just ask them. Just and do something. And he just sits there. He's just so obsessed with, like, like the show is just so obsessed with mystery that it just, like, <laughs> defies logic. Yeah, I mean, I was very intrigued, like, from the first season. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, what's gonna, you know, how did this yeah. happen? How can Aaron turn into a Titan? Blah, blah, blah. And then, like, uh, I mean, I don't think either of us have watched season three, but, no. like, it seems like they're still kind of pulling you along on that leash. Like, you know, you want to find out, don't you? Yeah. But we are going to watch season three at some point, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I... I because it's like as much as I hate that show, I have this like attachment to it. Yeah. Now. So I think I think it'd be fun to do something with it. Like sure. maybe not the first six episodes, but just like the whole show and just talk about it or something. Sure. Yeah. Know. It'd be like a big season finale kind of thing. Yeah. Even though we don't have seasons or finales. I mean, or... we're 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 our own podcast. Yeah. We do whatever we exactly, want. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, this is the season premiere. Yeah. And it'll <laughs> and it'll end when we fucking say so. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah, there we go. Um, you know what? The other night, uh, my girlfriend and I, we went and saw Parasite. Oh, shit. Um, that was really good. I don't want to talk about that. I saw the Sonic movie. <laughs> uh, the Sonic movie is... Okay. What did you like more, Parasite or the Sonic movie? Oh, fuck, don't ask me that. Um, <laughs> my heart liked Sonic more. Okay. My brain liked Parasite more. That's- very I can ex- I can explain why Parasite was good. I just I just like Sonic, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's all there was. Uh, it's 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 one of those like you know the um, whenever there's an adaptation uh, like a movie adaptation of a thing that doesn't focus on humans, they always have to try to put it in a human world to make it easier for the audience to relate to it. Yeah. And so they do that with Sonic. He comes to Earth as a kid and he like imprints on this cop essentially. Um, okay. He like, but he's like watching him from afar because like no one can know of his existence because he like he can re- run really fast and that's like a superpower and people could uh, want to yeah, use it. Pretty effective. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so like he imprints on James Marsden's cop character and uh, they eventually they meet and then they have to go to San Francisco because Sonic lost his rings there and um, it's just a little buddy journey from Montana to San Francisco. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, it's yeah. just a good old time. It, it seemed like a wonderful time. Um, I. 
was very disappointed I could not talk my girlfriend into going on Valentine's shame, Day. Shame. I'm I'm still pissed. I mean, I get why they did it. They had to redo a bunch of stuff. But of like course. that movie was going to come out on like um, one of our friend's 30th birthday. Oh, like that would have been perfect. Yeah. You know? like, that been, and instead it's like, oh, I guess I'll just... Girlfriend doesn't want to see it on Valentine's Day. It was like our first Valentine's so Day together. Like, oh. Just so unreasonable. So, yeah, right? <laughs> Ridiculous. I mean, to be fair, my girlfriend also bailed on it, but I went with uh, with Tyler and Anthony, our roommates, and we just uh, <laughs> we snuck two flasks and some beers in there, and we just, uh, just, just had got, a great old time. Just got smashed. Yeah, Tyler time. fell asleep, and it was just great. <laughs> <laughs> There were some, aside from the cop thing, there were, like, a few little bits that I had, like, an issue with in that, like, so the, it, it, to begin with, Sonic is in, like, Green Hill Zone, mm-hmm. but not because it's, it, the rest of it takes place in Green Hills, Montana, but um, uh, he's in, like, the first level from the first Sonic, right? Yeah. And he has this um, this caretaker named Long Claw, she's an owl, and she's telling him, like, you can never let people know about your power, like, you they will use it for evil. You can't do it. And as she's explaining this, a bunch of echidnas show up, like Knuckles, right? Yeah. But they're in, like, war paint and masks, and they're, like, shooting arrows and, like, doing, like, really kind of uncomfortable war cries kind of stuff. Okay. And I'm just like, this is... I can't say it's, like, racist against a particular group because it's that sort of, mm-hmm. like, very ambiguous, like, quote, tribal thing. But at yeah. the same time, like, this is a little weird. Well, is it trying to be, like... Uh... Is it trying to be, like, Native American, like, South American? Because it isn't Knuckles, if I remember correctly, from, like, uh, the Knuckles section of Sonic Adventure. Mm-hmm. Isn't he in, like, an Aztec kind of Yeah, they place? have those kind of square pyramid-looking thingies. Um, I mean, I'm not saying they, obviously, it doesn't sound like they nailed it. Were they going for something like that? or uh, Hard to say. They're in it for, like... 30 seconds max. Oh, um, that's, that's a, a strange touch in yeah, 2020. Very odd, yeah. yeah. But then he, like, he goes through a portal and shows up on Earth, and he's, like, hiding out there. There's some, like, really cool uh, Easter egg bits, like, um, or not Easter egg bits, but, like, little nods to the series. Like, every time Sonic gets hurt, he drops his rings. Um, okay. Like, you know, he'll drop them in a pouch, or, like, sometimes they'll just, like, all fall over the place. So, like, you know, reference there. And then, like, a lot of the just animations and things that he does are taken straight from the Sonic games. Uh, Tyson Hass worked on the um, the like redesign yeah. uh, for the Sonic movie. He also did all the animations for Mania yeah. and also worked on the comic book. I think. So, yeah, he's done a, a ton of Sonic stuff. Like, totally. if anybody should be designing Sonic related stuff, absolutely. Um, I do desperately want them because they have it done. Kind of release the shitty Sonic version with the uh, human team. <laughs> See, what I read there was that. The only footage that they actually had done with that Sonic was what you saw in the original trailer, and, th- and that makes sense because, like, you like they probably didn't render everything because that takes ages. Of like, course, um, I I heard something like uh, the third Transformers movie. If you tried to render it on a single computer, it would take like a trillion years. Wow, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so I imag- I can't imagine Sonic has the same level of that, but it would probably take a very long time, a lot of PC power to be like. Here's a worse version of a product. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah, that's a lot of money that they don't need to spend. Like, yeah. Sonic did pretty well. Yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, yeah. I still want it, though. Yeah, no, yeah. same. <laughs> same. As as hideous as that was, and as upset as I was at that first trailer, like, yeah. I still want to see that. Yeah, I wish absolutely. that could be, like, a bonus on the DVD. Yeah, because I was really, like, I, I perpetually want Sonic... Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I perpetually want Sonic 06 level Sonic stuff. <laughs> And I felt like that ver- that Sonic was kind of, like, it was getting me there. But then, like, Jim Carrey looked really good in it. Jim Carrey was actually really good in it. Yeah, like, yeah. he seemed like he was enjoying himself. Yeah. Um, and then there was, uh... And let me say, I don't give a fuck about Jim Carrey's movies. Like, I don't like him in anything besides, <laughs> besides this and, like, uh, Eternal Sunshine. That's probably it. And I thought he was great in yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. So we've talked about how I used to hate anime and Sonic. I feel like we've really established our characters in this podcast, (laughs) like, understanding where we're at. Yeah, I'm the the optimistic one, you're the one who hates. Yeah, exactly. I'm (laughs) excited for Doom, you're excited for Animal Crossing. Excellent. There we go. Excellent. Classic sitcom uh, relationship here, you know? Yeah, I like that. Uh, You want to talk about anime? Yeah, let's talk about anime. All right, let's talk about Gargantia. Of the Verdurus planet. Yeah. I think I got that right. Uh, we never, I think we said we were going to look up how to pronounce Verdurus or Verdurus or however, but we didn't. So that's how it's pronounced now. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's right. I yeah. Know. 
Gargantia on the Verderous planet. On the Verderous planet. Not of, planet. The, <laughs> of, not of, on. Okay. I feel like it works either way, but yeah. It kind of does. Okay. Yeah. So let's... We say no Gargantia. That's the... <laughs> there you go. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm very bad at remembering the Japanese names for things. I, I basically require an English name or I'm going to be like, uh, I'm struggling, help. But in this case, I feel like we say it's just easier to remember than the Verdurus planet. The Verdurus. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. This, this, this anime is quite the mouthful. Yeah. Um, so, initial thoughts on the first six episodes mm-hmm. of... This show with the long title. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, because we can do want to do like a little, little, like, one liner about like what it's about, like the description. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you got a little synopsis? Sure. I can, I can kind of freewheel this. Okay. So, um, this is about a young soldier named Leto, Leto. Leto um, yeah, Leto. Uh, he ha- was, I'm pretty sure, like, grown in a lab and he has one exact purpose which is to fight the hideous which are these giant nice thank you thank you uh to be fair this is my second time watching this i watched it back in like 2012 or something like that originally so um but yeah so he's he's born and bred to fight these things he drives this giant mech named chamber and they just have big gundam style space battles robot's name is caliber no it's the he calls it chamber. He calls it chamber. Never mind. All right. Yeah. No. You're oh, right. it is. It is you're a right. machine caliber. It's a machine caliber. Yeah. And, okay. You're don't right. Check me God on this damn shit. it! God damn it! Why did I interrupt you? Do, do your thing. You know this. Oh god. Okay. So Leto's in the big space battle. There's lasers. People are dying. It's crazy. Oh my god. War is so real. And then the aliens like a big squid monster. Thing. Yeah. They're yeah. giant like I don't know nautiluses or squids or yeah. whatever. They some of them have shells. I think I don't know. Um, yeah, and then he ends up being separated from his squad or whatever, and through a series of cosmic twists and turns, he ends up crash landing on a floating city on Earth. Uh, mm-hmm. though, like, he doesn't even recognize it as Earth. Like, humanity is so far removed from that. Yeah, they haven't been point. to Earth in, you know, a bazillion years. Exactly. But here's this city full of people. Yeah. Um, it's like a, just a shit ton of boats, like, hogtied together to make a city. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, and it's just about him, like, trying to get through life on this new thing, and yeah. he doesn't know how human society works. Yeah, and it's, like, it's so far away from, like, everything he was born around, though, like, he doesn't know how to get back, he doesn't know how to send a transmission to them. For all intents and purposes, he is dead to that world, and he now just exists on Earth. Yep. With a super futuristic robot that can, you know, do a lot of things that they are not able to do. Yeah, the robot is very powerful. Yeah, yeah. very Extremely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I guess just initial thoughts, what did you think, what do you think of the show? Um, so uh, like I said, I watched this back in like 2012 or something like that, and, um, or I guess 2013, it came out in 2013. Um. Yes, please get your timeline right. (laughs) Excuse me, so I was, I was, so I was 21. Um, (laughs) and at the time I remember really liking it, um, you know, I liked the characters and I I really, I still really like the set design of it, just the way that the Gargantia looks, like the city looks and stuff like that yeah like, i think yeah the, the show looks really good yeah for the most yeah. part it's a real looker uh chamber being like cg while the rest of it is mostly not is uh kind of kind of jarring yeah but, yeah um, absolutely yeah I, I wonder if it's i mean i guess there's other cg elements so it doesn't quite work i was gonna say like i wonder if he's supposed to look different from everything else so that he seems more futuristic i think so maybe or maybe it's i'm sure it's just like a budget thing because yeah. the other mechs like they have um oh you're right they have uh god i can't remember the name of them now but like they're these much much lower tech kind of giant robots that they use for like fishing and construction yeah. and stuff they're basically like powered uh deep sea they're basically like submarines with arms yeah yeah know? yeah pretty much yeah um but yeah, as as someone who at the time really enjoyed slice of life type stuff, this mm-hmm. one really and sci fi type stuff, this really like stood out to me because it was like kind of a marriage of the two, and yeah. I just liked the idea of this this guy who was like from birth made to be a killing machine. He has one sole purpose. Now he can't do that thing, and he just has to learn how to chill. Mm-hmm. Like it's a it's a show about a, a soldier learning how to chill the fuck out, go fishing, have a picnic, whatever. Yeah, you know, and that's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I, it's not what I expected initially. Sure. Um, but, and I have, like, I, I, I personally, like, I really like the first few episodes, and then it kind of dropped off for me right. a little bit. When when they start getting really into the meat and, meat and potatoes of chilling, just, yeah. just hanging out. Yeah, it's not, not quite what I expected. Learning how to use money and have a barbecue and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Real intense shit. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so let's let's go episode by episode, kind of talk about generally what we think of each episode. Okay. Uh, so the first episode is the uh, space battle. Uh huh. Um, yeah, that's, that's the old episode. Right, um, right. So the first episode is the space battle, uh, and they're fighting the the weird Nautilus thing that you were talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he gets sent to Earth. And all that jazz. I thought the space battle was pretty cool. Yeah. No, it looks really nice. Yeah. it's It's got that, like, uncomfortable CG kind of thing going. Where sort it's of. like, the CG is kind of fine, but it's paired with, like, hand-drawn, or quote-unquote hand-drawn sure, stuff. Sure, sure. So, it, it just kind of feels a little bit off. Yeah. Uh, but it does a good job of, like, I imagine making that battle possible at the beginning of the show. Totally. Because there's a ton of stuff going on. Yeah. Like, it's robots everywhere. Yeah. You know? And, like, lots of lasers and explosions and all the shit that yeah. I'm sure it took a shit ton of time and money to do. Yeah. Yeah. Despite, like I was saying, it's for budgetary reasons. Like, it was probably still very expensive. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. probably one of the most expensive scenes, right? But, like, <laughs> you know, and it's for a battle uh, in a show that's not really about that, you know? Yeah. So I, I do really appreciate the amount of, like production that went into that yeah. like they didn't have to go that hard you know what I yeah mean? well and it also it does a good job of kind of setting the tone for the universe that mm-hmm. uh, Leto is from that it's like yeah no we are fighting this alien like this is our, our final assault on it like yeah. we have to do this or humanity is doomed mm-hmm. like we need you to be at the top of your game, military boy. And classically, and, it's like it's right before his retirement. Or in this case, right before he gets to take four weeks off for the first time of his life. Yeah. And go meet other humans and, like, maybe eat food and have sex and stuff, you Yeah. Know? And it's like, I was like, oh, so this is what the show is going to be about. It's like, ooh, what are these humans in space? Are they really are what they're meant to be? And then it's like, we're done with space. Yeah, like the first, fuck like, space. Seven minutes, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, first third of the show. Is yeah, just, just about. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so then he lands on Earth. Mm-hmm. Um, I like a lot of the character models, or not models, uh, character designs sure. for the characters on Gargantia. Yeah. There's the Pompadour dude who I think is really cool. Um, most of the characters are pretty, like, they do a good job of, like, anime-wise of, like, all looking distinct, so you can kind of just at a glance go, like, oh, that's that character. Yeah, totally. No, I think um, they're, like, everybody has a very unique, like, kind of silhouette, and, like, really unique, like personality and stuff like that they're, yeah. they're very memorable characters yeah yeah except for amy's friends the the one with the long hair and the one with the short hair there's it's melty and something else wow look, it's better I, than I, I know it's melty because i there's a part where she says both their names and i'm like melty, that's, that's a weird, weird name okay <laughs> yeah all right well play melty play melty blood they, yeah. yeah that's a good time um but yeah, I, I thought, so I, I liked all that, um, and it's kind of, like, the episode ends with them kind of being at odds mm-hmm. with each other, because he's like, I'm not sure who they are, they're like, we don't know who this guy is, why does he have a robot that can fly, mm-hmm. um, he's never seen the ocean before, like, and they, what's they the can't, this shit? They can't speak the same language or anything. Oh yeah, that's a big thing, they yeah. speak different languages, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the robot is like slowly translating what their language is. He's yeah, he's figuring out like linguistically like how to translate yeah. whatever language they're speaking. Uh, and like to us it sounds like if from the perspective of if when we're through Leto's perspective and we hear him talk, he's speaking Japanese. And then when you're from like, you know, someone from the Gargantia speaking, they're also speaking Japanese. But you understand that it's not they don't understand each other. They don't other. understand each other. Yeah. yeah it's, um, in, I watched the dub a little bit, mm-hmm. and you'll see, like, basically whenever he gives Chamber an order, like, mm-hmm. hey, go do this, that's when he'll speak in a different language. Yeah. Um, and I was, again, I was only able to tell because now they're speaking English, so now I can be like, ah, I don't know those words, oh, so it you must can't, be the alien You couldn't one. tell the difference between the Japanese and the alien language? I'm dumb as shit, <laughs> so no. <laughs> That's fair. I can do English, and I know some Spanish words. Nice, nice. Um, That's all you need. You get outside of that realm, and it's like, <laughs> I know the words that they say, like, all the time in, like, anime. Sure. And that's about it. That's all you need. That's all I need, <laughs> yeah. So anytime they're saying, like, anything other than yes, I'm at a total loss. Yes, no, thank you. It can't be the true darkness. <laughs> uh, you, know, Nani, the, the usual. you know, the memes. Of course. The memes are... Um, Important. Of course. You're already dead. You know, yeah. Basic yeah, I can Japanese say that one stuff. in English. I yeah. can't do the Japanese version. Yeah, oh, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but episode one was, was cool. I was yeah. like, I was into it after uh, that point. I was like, okay, this, this show, I, I, I want to keep watching. Mm-hmm. What's going to happen? And then we get what? to episode two. Uh, this is they, where mm-hmm. they, they've stopped. They don't actively have a conflict going on anymore in that 
Leto has oh, oh I should back up first. In episode one, Leto takes Amy, like this this girl about his age, he takes her hostage and is running through the Gargantia trying to find a way out. He's ta- taking her hostage so that they don't shoot him. And yeah. um yeah, so like Everyone's a little frazzled, a little raw about that yeah. uh, at the beginning of episode two. He just kind of sits on this, like, tower or something like that, or, like, a dock. I don't know. Yeah, he's basically on, like, a like a crane going out in, over the water. Yes. He's, like, on top of that. That's and right. I think he has Amy at that point, so it's kind of like a hostage situation. Yeah. But they, don't, they all speak different languages, and there's different technology levels as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're kind of at odds with each other, um, and... The only thing I really remember from the episode is that, uh, like, pirates show up and they yes. surround one of the characters' boats, and then it's like, uh, Leto's like, oh, okay, I'll just go deal with these. And he just nukes them. Yeah. He just... He's, whoa, yeah. Just, and they're like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> what the fuck just happened? How like, did he kill all those pirates? Yeah. And that's, like, a recurring theme in the show is him, like, going like, oh, well, I have this futuristic solution to this. Yeah. And then he does it, and they're like, hey... That's not how we do things. Yeah, exactly. Like, he, he, like, fires one shot and it kills this, like, three dozen pirates. They just vaporize. They're gone. Yeah. And, yeah, and he takes, like, no effort. On yeah, he just yeah. presses a button. They're dead. Mm-hmm. And they're like, dude, what the fuck? Like, yeah. we could have talked that out. We could have... Everybody could have walked away from this. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. You know? And that was cool. I like yeah. that a lot. Yeah, no, I, I thought that I thought that was, uh, that was interesting. And it does a good job of, like... Like, they, they do a good job of, like... There's never a part in the show where the robot does something. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, they establish pretty quickly that, like, they don't really set rules for the robot, but the robot can just do really impressive things. Like, yeah. It can't make matter or anything, but sure. it can. It's very powerful energy-wise. Yeah, it has, like, gravitational fields and, like, super lasers, yeah. and it can fly crazy fast and lift very heavy things. Yeah. You know, all and, that cool shit. And between Leto and Chamber, like, they both take things very literally. They both, like, are just about, like, they're very, like, utilitarian. Yeah. Like, everything we do should be maximizing whatever we're doing. Mm-hmm. And, like, in episode five or six the robot goes fishing on its own <laughs> yeah. and it's like just annihilates all of these fish and brings back a ton of fish paste. Yeah. And they're, they're just mulched. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, what the fuck dude? And he's like, it's the same nutritional content yeah. <laughs> just in paste form. Yeah. Like it's not a big deal. Not wrong per se. I mean, they probably, you know, consume some sort of protein paste in space, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, exactly. So they're, they're like, yeah, this is chill. Yeah. And it's like, no, we want fish. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, and that's like, that kind of is where the show goes from there, is like just sort of Leto learning that people do things for pleasure and yeah. that not everything has to be towards the end of killing something yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Though it doesn't do that yet because episode three is right. another battle. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so episode three is where they deal, so the, the pirates got annihilated and now everybody on Gargantia is like, now we're gonna get attacked by the pirate fleet, so like, yeah, fuck, they, like dude. pissed them off. Yeah, dude, mm-hmm. like you really like fuck this up for us. Mm-hmm. God damn it! Um, but the giant robot is still very powerful yeah. and annihilates a lot of pirates. <laughs> so that's that's still a thing. Yeah. What I what I did really like though is um, so I liked the design for the. Empress the, pirate. The surfing lobster? Yeah. Her, her mech. Yeah, I liked her mech, the surfing lobster. And I liked that she had a good battle with the super-powered robot guy. Because mm-hmm. it's like, she like drags him underwater and yeah. he's like, you're fighting on my terms now. And he's like, yeah, I'm not good at this shit. <laughs> and uh, so it's like, there is some tension there. He's not totally unstoppable. Um, and I thought that was going to be a bigger theme of the show. It's like, right. we're just going to fight. Like, we're going to get, like, a, a Gruen Logon thing kind of going where it's like, we're going to fight perpetually harder generals. I can you know? see like, where that would... Like, we killed the this first pirate mm-hmm. emperor. Now we're going to kill the, the pirate mega emperor. And then we're going to keep going. And then eventually we just seamlessly segue into a One Piece uh, tie-in. Yeah. And he's just he's just one of the members of Luffy's crew, and they just, yep. they go find One Piece. We gotta get that One Piece. We gotta get that One Piece. You gotta they gotta be close at this point. I probably. I remember a few years, <laughs> I remember a few years ago, Oda announced that they were, like, at the halfway point. Yeah. Like, I, like maybe four or five years ago. You know, yeah. So. And that's, and they're at, like, 700 episodes or something? Something like that. I've, it, one piece is one of those things I've been meaning to get into, but it's like that's there's a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, and like as a side tangent, like I, I 
I feel like the thing too with One Piece is it's like the show, you know, it's like a ton of arcs, right? Some arcs are good, some arcs are bad. Are there ones I can just skip? You know, is are there chunks of like thirty episodes like where I can just read like, you know, Luffy got too high and learned drugs are bad. <laughs> um and then just like, and knowing that, I can just skip thirty episodes. I mean, if I had to guess, there's probably episodes of the show you can skip, like filler, yeah. but probably the manga, maybe not. Yeah. Um. I mean, as somebody who doesn't know shit about One Piece, but like has watched a lot of other long running shonens, like yeah, yeah, there's always some filler arc that you can just like kind of get past and not. There's nothing changing through it. Yeah, exactly. Like the characters are the same, the items are the same. Mm-hmm. Maybe you learned that one of them doesn't like their stepdad. Sure, and that's. Fine. Yeah. You know. But that character doesn't, doesn't fucking matter anyway. Like, they're just gonna... They <laughs> yeah. come up and say, like, my stepdad's a dick, and then you don't see them for another 20 episodes, so who cares? <laughs> um, Take that stepdad's <laughs> anime. <laughs> yeah. Dun, dun. <laughs> Fuck anime stepdads. I can't think of a single good anime stepdad. I can't. The only one I can think of is Kaiba's adopted father, who's kind of a stepdad. Kaiba has an adopted father? Yeah. There's a, there's a really fucking awful arc where... Uh, right before one of the biggest battles in the original Duel Monsters, mm-hmm. they go on like a 40 episode just side tangent where they're in this digital world and it was created by Kaiba's, Kaiba's secret brother and his uh, adopted father lives there too and Kaiba's got dad issues huh. and duels his dad. He duels his dad? Yeah. In the Isekai anime game thing? Basically, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. But it's like it sucks because it's it's like the equivalent of like we're 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 about to get to the final round of uh, the fucking dark tournament. Mm-hmm. It's not that good, but sure, like, sure. But like you know, like holy shit, and then like oh, no, we're gonna go on this total <laughs> different thing. Like like the the villain, I, I think it was Merrick. Like he's like he does nothing. Merrick, that's in the that's in the Battle City or Duel City or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, it's, so it's, we're, yeah, we're so out it's, of it's the. Pa- it's post Duelist Kingdom. Okay, it's the it's basically the resolution of Battle City. Right. When you said they're... original Duel Monsters, I thought I assumed like the Duelist Kingdom thing. Yeah, yeah. No, sorry, I meant I meant Duel or Battle City. Okay. And then they battle on the Zeppelin, and then they're about to battle on a fucking island, and then they just do nothing. Oh, that's where I fell off, actually. Yeah. I oh, fell I get off it, of dude. Yu-Gi-Oh! at that yeah. point. Yeah, and I never watched another episode. Well, and I got to the end, and I, like, the wind was so out of my sails, and I was <laughs> like, I don't... I don't care. And I, I never finished it, and as much as I love that... Loved... Loved that <laughs> that's show, that's... Um, I don't know if I'm ever gonna finish it, because I'm just like... Shame. Who cares? Real shame. Yeah. Yeah. Why do the good die young? Damn. Um, but yeah Um, so for me these first three episodes of Gargantia have a certain kind of tone to them where it's like oh here's this military guy and he's very powerful yeah but you need to be careful with your power don't kill the pirates Mm -hmm. uh, because life is precious yeah Um, and so there's there's this balance there but I'm thinking based on the number of battles that have happened, I'm like, there's going to be a lot of battles in this show. Yeah, it kind of portrays itself like a battle anime, even through the first three. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's, it's almost going to be like Monster of the Week, kind of. Kind of, yeah. Um, yeah, way wrong, Go, going by the next three. The nope. next three are very slice of life. Yeah, extremely. And that really caught me off guard. That's fair. Because, like, the... So, in episode four, I was I was taking notes. I lost my notes that I wrote down in on paper, right. but I have notes that I kept on my phone, and the first note I wrote for episode four while I was watching, I was like, oh, like, I'm getting vibes, like, like, they're pulling up all this metal stuff from the water, or it's like, oh, they're gonna, like, this is like in Guron Lagon when, like, they get their own mechs and stuff oh, like that, and everybody's okay. gonna start doing that, Okay, and I'm, that's the first note I have on episode four, and, oh boy, that is not what happens. No, <laughs> they're not building up a resistance, they're just fishing, no, they're, they're just, just fishing, fishing and finding shit to sell, they're just, cool. they're just chilling. Um, yeah. and that's like, uh, I, I think I mentioned this earlier, but like, you know, one of my hangups with a lot of like sci-fi and fantasy and anything that takes place in a world other than our own, yeah. um, is that like, you see these really interesting worlds with these like cool set designs and like just cool shit going on. And like, you kind of look in the background at just like people going there about their day-to-day lives. And I kind of go like, man, I wish I could see like, you know, 
what things are like when it's just chill here. Because it's yeah. all you're always watching the story when the evil empire attacks or whatever. And yeah. I just wish you could see, like, yeah, what do these people do to just have fun? What's what's their life's goals and things like that? Yeah. And this show delivers on that, like I didn't in a way that I didn't expect, which is probably why I like it so much to begin with. Yeah, and I see and I kind of feel the opposite way. Where mm-hmm. it's like, um, I like worlds where it feels like things are happening in the background that like the world exists without the characters, mm-hmm. but I don't necessarily want to know about what happened. Like, I want to use my imagination. Sure. I don't necessarily want to see that. Sure. And I'm sure um, if, like, every f- fantasy or sci-fi show is like this, I'd probably get annoyed with it. But, yeah. like, this is kind of an outlier in that regard, which which I'm a fan of. Yeah. And I, and I should say, too, like, while I'm kind of down on where the show goes, mm-hmm. I I didn't hate it. Yeah. You know, like, it was definitely, like, well done. Yeah. For, for what it was. Like, it's a very good looking anime for the most part. Yeah. Like, that's the wild thing. Is like, whenever I think of that show, I think of that, the, the CG robot. And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah, the show's not that good looking. And then, but no, the animation's really, like, top notch. Like, yeah. All the, all of the, the quote unquote hand drawn stuff is, like, really well done. Totally. The, the movements are smooth. Um, you should learn the word for that, like, digitally drawn kind of... Yeah, I mean, I think I'm just going to end up saying, quote-unquote, hand-drawn for as long as we do a podcast. Sure. So I won't stop yet. Yeah. It's just a lot of syllables. People out there, if you know what the term is, tell me, because <laughs> otherwise, this won't end. Yeah. Let's, let's clear up this, like, any misconceptions right now. Like, you know, typically people start a focused podcast on something because they happen to know a lot about that thing. Yeah. We're fucking dumb. Like, we, don't, we don't know shit. Yeah, no, we, we just watch a lot we, of this. We just like anime and we like hanging out. Yeah. So why not do? Why don't make a podcast? Yeah. So it's, let me let your hopes down now. Yeah. So I don't build them up anymore because I'm sure they thought we were geniuses from the last yeah. you know hour. Yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. Like neither of us really has like a background in animation. No. Um. Like I've I've got a an A in film, so I've made some some short movies. Yeah. I've never made anything I would say is necessarily good but uh i feel like i I understand some stuff and like pacing and yeah and i've been involved in music for about 16 years now so like you know i know things about that wouldn't say i've made anything good either but you know (laughs) here we are yeah and uh so but yeah when it comes to animation it's definitely something that like we're going to be talking out of our ass a little absolutely. bit. Absolutely. That's, that's fine. Absolutely. Everyone else on the internet does. Yeah. So, fuck it. We're, we're getting our getting our piece of the pie. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I thought episode four was, did a good job of, it was, it was, I didn't expect it to be what it was, mm-hmm. but it was pretty good at introducing all of these characters that are going to become important. Yeah. We've got like Amy's bedridden brother, who's mm-hmm. Babel, Babel. Bat. Bevel? Yeah, Babel? Oh, no, it's Bevel. Be- Bevel? Maybe it's Bevel. I got B-E-B-L. B-E-B-E-L. Ooh, why well, was it, that hard? It could be either way, because, oh. like, it could be a translation error. Because, like, B and V, like, Bravo and Victor, are the same in Japanese. Oh. Yeah, it's it's all spelled with a B. Oh. Like, yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, who knows? Who knows? Barrett from Final Fantasy VII, his name was supposed to be Bullet. It's, it's the same in Japanese. Bareto. So. Interesting. There you okay. go. Who knows? Know. Yeah. Um, Let me just derail this again. Yeah. Derail, no, I'm trying to remember what was happening. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was pretty good. And it's also like, it's it's setting up, like you were saying, like it's setting up the world. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, Leto needs, or Leto needs money. He doesn't understand what money is. Yeah. He kind of like comes from like a, I don't want to say it like, I can't think of, like, a good term for it. I was going to say egalitarian, but that doesn't really apply yeah. because it's, like, a military complex, so Yeah, right. I, I was going to say fascist communism, but that doesn't quite work. Because he doesn't, like, everything's sure. provided, but yeah. you don't, but you're also, like, this, like, military authority. Yeah. I don't know. You can, you can have all your necessities as long as, at the end of the day, you go out and kill those space mollusks. Yeah. Listen, you got to defend the Empire. Sorry, buddy. That's but, hey, here's a meal ticket. Exactly. There we go. Get yourself uh, some bean paste on the house. Yeah. You know? So he's he's very confused by the concept of money. Which, mm-hmm. Okay, that's kind of fun. But he yeah. wants to make money. Well, he has to make money because they, they gave him a bill for uh, all the yeah. shit he destroyed. He destroyed so much shit that they're just like, yeah, you gotta pay for it. Yeah, man. they invoice this, him. This is kind of your fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you crashed through the, the hull of the ship and you yeah. shot up a bunch of stuff, killing the pirates and all this. Like, you know, we need, yeah. need some scratch from you. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny that, like, it doesn't seem like everybody seems so like cooperative and working together in that world. Mm-hmm. It's kind of funny that there is money in some ways. Kinda like 
But, you know. But they, they go on to explain that, I think, in... Uh, I can't remember if it's four or six. No, it must be six. But they, they go out, like, saying, you know, it's uh, this is a society that can only work if everybody pitches in and, like, finds their purpose and does it, you know, so that everyone can benefit from it. Yeah. And the money that they have, it's not about, like, being richer than other people or anything like that. The money that you have is a rep it represents the contributions that you have made to their society Mm. and like that's a very 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 idealistic way of looking at money in general yeah not gonna fly in the real world but it's a nice thought you're right exactly like because like more more real well i I, obviously this is an idealistic world so it's like you know like my my cynical mind immediately goes like yeah but who's like benefiting from all this (laughs) like who's like the like the you know, the tyrant small business owner who's yeah. like, just like, yeah, we appreciate your contributions to society, but, like, I just need more of your contribution than you do. Exactly. You know? Like, someone's going to find a way to game that system. But, like, this is kind of supposed to be an anti-war anime, not necessarily an anti-capitalist anime. And yeah. I guess we can go into the leads as far as, like, how those two can't be different. But, you know. Yeah. Well, and I, yeah, and it, it is nice. Like, I was reading about, like, I'm just going by the Wikipedia here, but, like, uh, it's it's nice the sentiments that are that that the show has like um, it, it says that like the the writer w- really wanted to um, make the show to kind of encourage people who were just kind of stepping out into the world. Yeah. Like, hey, it's not that scary. Like you can be a part of this world. Mm-hmm. You know. You I actually this. I forgot entirely that this is by Gen Urobuchi who did um, the Madoka Magica series and. Um, Fate Zero, and Song of Saya. Oh. He usually does much darker stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, so it's, it's, this is kind of an optimistic take by him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, very, yeah, that's very different. Oh, <laughs> yeah. my God. I did yeah. not know it was that same guy. If, if you're familiar with Song of Saya, yeah, that's a oh. big change. Wow. Yeah. More you know? Fuck. Okay. <laughs> well, this show is very positive. Yeah, very. <laughs> extremely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Um, I did not see that coming. Yeah, I forgot about that entirely. But um, yeah. So, so episode five. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of money, he's trying to find a job. He's trying to find his purpose on Gargantia. Yeah. Like the robot is able to to make money for the two of them. It's like able to because it can operate on its own and all that jazz. Yeah, and it can do anything pretty much. It can like yeah. lift the heaviest shit and you know basically do any sort of manual labor that they need done on a yeah. large scale. Yeah. So he's making bank, but Leto feels a little useless by comparison. Yeah, you know he wants to. He he seems to like the society, so he wants to help out. Yeah. Um, and throughout so, throughout he's like learning their language as well. Yeah, it starts nice out really touch. broken up, and then he's slowly getting more fluent in it, which is a cool bit. Yeah, and I and I kind of forgot about that. Mm-hmm. I was watching episode five, and I was at that point I was like eating some food, so I put on the dub. Ah, uh, right, right. And like his like he said a sentence, and it was like a really weird sentence. I was like, the fuck did he just <laughs> say? Like. What is this? Like, yeah. bad trans... Oh, right. It's Yeah, it's weird know. because... Well, because you're hearing it as the same language. So when it's from Leto's perspective, he's just like, oh, what an interesting planet. They seem to consume the corpses of sea life and stuff. And then, like, he's yeah. talking to someone else in their language, and he's like, how do you use money? You know, like, yeah. really, really. But for, it's it's to same. your ears, it's yeah. the same. To the audience's ears, yeah. Mm-hmm. Same, same language. Just all of a sudden, he sucks at it. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, so episode five was kind of what cemented, like, oh, this is going to be more of a slice of life show. Like, I was thinking, like, now something action packed's gonna happen. We had our, our fun episode, oh, now we're buddy. back to it. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to the beach episode. Yeah. We're not even halfway through, and we got a beach episode. Yep. It's, I mean, beach is a hard word because it's like, you know, it's taking place on a boat in the middle of a vast expanse of ocean. Yeah. But, you know. But the robot stands on one of the ends of the boats and basically makes a beach. There it is. So. Yeah. There's bikinis uh, and there's a barbecue. Yeah. All that good stuff. And and the episode has a lot of, um, not as much as episode six, but has a lot of re- revealing shots of uh, the female characters in the show. Yeah. I... Don't rem- I never remembered it being, like, that much. Like, I remember the dance scene, and that was, like, it. And I was like, well, okay, there's, like, a couple minutes of fan service in one of the episodes, and that's about it. But, no, watching back on it now, these ostensibly very young people are, uh, they don't wear a lot of clothes. No. And, and the show makes you aware of that. It's all these camera angles, 
are, you know, at Amy's, like, bust le- level or, like, kind of focus on her butt a little too long and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, a lot of, like, yeah, focus, like, the, where the shot is, like, no, we're just showing you her butt. Right yeah, now. yeah. Or, like, here's a shot of Leto, and, like, the ass takes up, like, <laughs> you know, it's all of, like, quarter to a third of yeah. the screen. Um, and I kind of get what they're going for, like, in a, in to give them, like, to give them, like, the benefit of the doubt, like, it is like I like Leto is becoming attracted to Amy. That's a good point. So it's like if you if you show like especially when you show the two of them like basically if you show her like her chest or her butt in the same shot as Leto, it's like okay, you're connecting these two things. Right. And, I didn't but, actually think of that like from Leto's perspective, but that's a very good point. Like he's never been in a situation to experience attraction to another human before. Yeah. And and I'm and I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt on that. Sure, one. there are so many of these shots. That like, <laughs> at a certain point, it's like it, I think it's less about showing like yes, he's attracted to a uh, human female now, and more about like yeah. When we said we were uh, trying to appeal to young people, we're we're trying to appeal to young men. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You know. Definitely, yeah. I mean, hey, two birds, one bus. stone, kind of thing. Yeah, two boobs, yeah. one stone. Two boobs. You know? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's, that's definitely, that's definitely a thing. And actually, I never considered it before. How old are I, these characters? So I looked it up. You did? Um, uh, so 15, 16. All right. Yeah. Shit. Uh, <laughs> I wanted Podcast to, give, over, I wanted to give them that out. Now we're on a list now. God damn it. All right. Um, well, yeah. I, I mean, mean, I said I like kill a kill. So the, yeah, yeah, that's I'm true. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. We can get more into that later. I, I feel. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, we can talk about it now it's it's sure. a weird thing of anime where it's like here are a bunch of revealing shots and it's on the surface it's like okay maybe this is a little crass but like whatever but it is always strange because it's like well yeah but this character is under 18 yeah you know and it's like and i don't think obviously i love kill a kill i sure. don't think that automatically disqu- like a show can be have problems you need to be aware of those problems, but you can still enjoy the show. Sure. But it is always a bit uncomfortable. It's like, like, especially with something like Gargantia, like, what? Just make everybody 18. <laughs> there's, and yeah, that's kind of the thing is there's a lot of situations wherein, you know, it's, it's made for high schoolers. It takes place in a high school kind of deal. Yeah. This school doesn't exist, right? <laughs> like it doesn't. You could have made them any age you want, and the yeah. same everything could have applied exactly the same. Yeah. In fact, probably would have made more sense because they all have like jobs and stuff like that, and yeah. you know, act like functioning adults. They're just fifteen on paper, right? And it just makes it all weird, mm-hmm. right? Like, why is that? Other than like telling the teenagers who are watching it, like, "Yep, that's for you, buddy." You know, there you have go. fun. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's also stranger in Gargantia because it's like, not to say that like eighteen year olds are like super mature sure. people, but like. Amy is, like, the way her character behaves is, yes, like a lot of anime girls in shows, yeah. but also extremely young in behavior. Like, she's very excited, she's very, um, I guess she knows a lot about the world compared to, to Leto, mm-hmm. so, or Leto, so it, it, it's not like she's, like, fucking up and making loads of mistakes. She's, like, really that. bubbly. Yeah, I don't know necessarily bubbly. think yeah. that's, like, an ex- uh, 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 an exclusively no, you're, teenager you're, trait. Yeah, no, I think I think you're right. I think I I, I went into that half con. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't Check know. I just, just, just the whole time I was like watching, I'm like, it, it does feel like she's at least to me like she's very young. Sure, sure. You know, and that makes and I think that's it's more uh, accentuated by the fact that there is like you know Bellows who's like probably what early mid twenties and she's like she's drawn very differently from yeah. Watch, I'm going to look and she's going to be like 17 because, you know, anime. <laughs> <Cause> anime. <makes. laughs> but, yeah, but, yeah. Because yeah. any character over the age of 20 is like an old Yeah, man. fucking old. Yeah. yeah. You, you killed me earlier when you I mentioned Aaron from Final Fantasy X. <laughs> and I looked at I was like, he's like mid-50s, easy. He's 35. 35, yeah. Uh, what an old man. I'm there in six years. <laughs> this, this is another thing. Yeah. Anyway, so... <laughs> I don't want to talk about that anymore. Yeah, no, I, you know, I turned 30 in like four months. Oh, man. Yeah, it's yeah. wild. Damn, I always forget you're older than me. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> I just look so old. 
um, yeah. But yeah, there's no like conclusion here. There's no like I don't have an answer. No, I'm gonna there keep is watching not. anime. That's the thing. That's problematic is is that's the thing is like there's arguments for both sides and. You can find anyone from any demographic who's going to give you the argument that you want to hear. You can yeah. you can say, like, okay, well, this is objectifying women, and it's, like, you know, kind of predatory in the fact that, like, it's, you know, looking at kind of younger characters. And then you can find plenty of women who are very knowledgeable about feminism and all the rest who are just like, dude, it's just a drawing, don't worry about it, you know? Yeah. And who are we to make the decision right. to straight dudes? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's it, I I don't know what the answer is. I don't fucking I, know. Yeah, I don't fucking know. I it it's, it just does make me like feel a bit like like pervy and not in a fun way. That's that's kind of my biggest takeaway from it. It's like it's not even like a feeling bad for enjoying it kind of thing. It's yeah. just like I just feel uncomfortable. Yeah, and I, I think that's especially the case with like Argantia. Like, yeah, with Kill a Kill, it's like I, I I will make more mental leaps to be like. Yeah, this is good because sure. I love the show. Sure. With Gargantia, I'm kind of like, eh, about it. So when <laughs> I'm seeing it, it's like more off-putting. Right. That makes perfect sense. Um, and and kind of speaking of off-putting too, let's let's go down the. Uh, oh, we're getting there road. already. So okay. like in episode five, um, so there's they're ha- they're gonna have a barbecue. They've mm-hmm. got their beach set up thanks to the robot, and um, they they're like, hey. Something happened. Uh, go down to this place. He needs to go know. get sauce, right? Yeah. yeah. He doesn't know what it is, but go down to this place. Um, go by yourself. Go do this. Mm-hmm. And he goes down to the CD area of mm-hmm. Gargantia and is chased by... Three very trans-coded characters. Yes. Uh, I mean... I... But, but, like, not... Not in, like, an androgynous kind of way, but in a, like... These are very clearly men... Wearing women's clothes. Yeah, and wigs and makeup and stuff like yeah, that. Like one and, of them is extremely muscular. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it seems as though, because they all come out of the same building, it kind of seems like, and it's got like a neon sign and mm-hmm. it's stuff, it very well could be a drag club or something like that, you know, but... Um, right. But they, and, they, 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 I think they kind of, I mean, it could, maybe I'm reading into it too deep, but it does have a, like, uh like almost like it's a brothel or something, sure. Because they they start chasing Lido because they want him to join them. They're like, you know, you're a handsome yeah. young man. You'll do yeah. great here. You'll yeah. do great here. Um, in when Lido ends up dealing with them again, he's covered in kisses. Yeah, later. he's got a bunch of lipstick marks. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's all played for a laugh. It's just such a tired joke. Yeah, it's just. I mean, even even ethics aside, like just talking about the quality of it, it's not a funny joke. Right. It's just not. Sorry to open a beer. Your, <laughs> no, your that's funny. Very good point there. Yeah. No, you're you're dead on. It's it's yeah. an old joke. It's. Um, yeah, and well, and it's it's also like, I am not. I'm I'm like shitty woke, mm. where it's like, I I I know I should be more on top of these things but i'm not and i'm really pretty bad at it sure um but you know i I try to make an effort i maybe not enough but whatever um but i definitely remember there's a part where and i I wrote it down in the note there um it's like he's being chased and the subtitles are just like you know sound effect transvestites yelling did it actually say that it said transvestites yelling oh fuck i missed that Oh, and and I was watching the dub at that point, right? So I don't know if the sub has different subtitles. I don't think so. I, don't, I think they usually don't. Yeah, because like, transvestites is a derogatory term, it is. right? Yeah, I'm pretty so sure. I was like, so like that just like made it more uncomfortable. It's like, oh, not only is this like played for laughs, and like especially these days, like you know, we're basically just punching down at a like you know. Uh, affected group of people a group that already has to deal with so much shit so much shit and it's like and and here's this like not that it would have made it better if it said like transgendered yelling or oh, something that's... but it's it's definitely like a subtitle that's just like what a specific kind of punch down you yeah know? Like just a rude 
thing to do. Like, you know. really could have had, like, any sort of CD Red Light District-esque figure. Yeah. You know, it could have been, like, I don't know, Yakuza Parallels, or it could have been, yeah. you know, like, someone, maybe just, like, a, a brothel manager trying to get, but, like, yeah. just a dude who's like, hey, it look great, the, le- the fellas will love you, or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. you know, there are so many ways that they could have had the same exact impact without having to aim a shot at people who don't deserve that shit at all. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Weird, weird out of place. Just. Yeah. Thing. Well, and he, he's almost killed by them as well. That's he's right. He's running away from them and they chase him up this thing and he like falls off the thing and is only saved because Amy and her friends were racing They're nearby. On their, on on their like paragliders or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Flying by and just happens to rescue mm-hmm. him. And it's like, yeah, like he could have, he could have been killed. It's like, and again, it's all like in the tone of the show. They're not doing this to be like malicious or be like, look at what you know these these trans people are doing. Like yeah. they're they're a problem on society, but they are in this seedy underbelly, and they seem to be a very active part of the seedy underbelly. Yeah. Of yeah. So it's not a not a great look, and. I mean, I can't really even give it the, like, you know, well, it flew off a lot better in 2013, like, seven years ago, man. Yeah, like, trans it's... people been around for <laughs> centuries, you right, know? exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, exactly. You can't be like, well, it was the 80s. They didn't know <laughs> it better. It's like, yeah. uh, even that excuse doesn't really work. No, yeah. no. Um, uh, so, yeah. that was, so episode five was not my favorite. <laughs> That's fair. I... Yeah, Ooh. I remember liking, like, you know, my favorite part of the show was these, like, few episodes where it's just, like, we're just chilling, we're slice of life mode, the mm-hmm. space shit can worry later, it can happen later, but we're just gonna hang out. Um, and kind of looking back at it now, I'm like, I like what this stands for, I like the purpose of this episode, and there's bits that I thought were neat, but you, a lot of it just doesn't age very well for no. me, you know? Coming back as a 28, almost 29 year old, I'm like, uh, it's kind of yeah. sucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, well, let's get into the final episode, right. episode six. Um, I say let's get into the final episode like something's going to happen. It's kind of more episode five. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Leto gets paid for the first time, I think. He's and got money. He's got some money. Doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah, he doesn't really understand like what its purpose is. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Chamber says something like, the, the closest... The closest parallel I could draw for you is it's kind of like those ration meal tickets they had back on the station, you know? Mm. And so he's like, well, fuck, I mean... Oxygen is plentiful here. I don't need to buy that. Yeah, uh, it's like food isn't that expensive. I think they paid me too much. Like kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it was it was you know more more kind of fun stuff. Yeah. Um, We're gonna have a festival. There's a festival. Yeah, yeah. I, I wrote down what you said. It's festival time. It's festival time. Um, we got the beach episode, and then the prepping for fe- the festival episode. And I bet you the next one's gonna be the festival. <laughs> well, it's it's wild that like. Episode 5 has so much fan service in it, and episode 6 makes you forget that episode 5 has fan service in it. Because it goes even how harder. Much there is. It, like, there, so, the big scene that sticks out in my mind is that there are the three female uh, young characters. Amy, uh, Amy Melty, Melty, and the other one. Amy, Melty, and Joe. And Joe Biden. And they're all, the three of them are all doing belly dances. Saya. 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 Yeah, yeah, that was close. Um, Yeah, close enough. (laughs) uh, The three of them all do, like, this belly dance thing. And it's, like, very sexual. Yeah. Like, less less a dance and more just, like, we're going to show angles of, like, boobs moving around and butts going around. And um, it's, like, on a stage at a bar, and it's just all, like, way older dudes just, like, cheering. Well, the the thing that I thought was weird was, like, yeah, it's mostly older dudes cheering, but there are, like, kids and, like, families there. So oh, it's, I like, didn't even notice I, that. I think it's supposed to be, because obviously, like, belly dancing isn't, I mean, I don't know a ton about belly dancing, but sure. I don't think it's just a straight up like sexual. Dance. It's 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 not as though that's the you'll only find it in in countries where that's prevalent. It's not yeah. as though that you, the only place you'll find it is like a strip club kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I again, it's I don't not know as, shit about yeah. belly dancing, but I don't believe that's. I'm pretty sure it's not yeah. as indecent as you know anything else like that. Yeah, or as what we saw in episode six. Yeah, and, like this is a very in the the way it's framed and everything. It's 
very sexual. And also, like, no disrespect whole... to strip clubs or anything like that. Sex work is real work. Don't worry about that. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah. They're but fifteen it's... is the problem. <laughs> anyway, they're, they're fifteen, and it's like it's a very sexual dance for this like family, like what's supposed to be like a family festival. You know, yeah. like let's all get everyone together and let's all ogle at these sexy fifteen-year-olds. <laughs> Yeah. Please never take that out of context. <laughs> and you know what? I actually, I guess I misspoke recently because they talk about the festival, but like, was that itself the festival? Just them dancing? That's what I thought. Because I don't know. I guess when because she was talking about like she was going to show Leto like how to spend money and stuff like that at the festival, and I guess right. maybe it's just brain poisoning from other animes. Like I assumed <laughs> it'd be the thing where they have a bunch of stands and they're wearing hikatas and they're like. They, they play a little carnival games, try to catch the goldfish in the thing and right. all that, you know? No, no, none of that. It's just that, that's just a night at the bar. The, yeah, exactly. You know? Well, it's, it's, it's just Thursdays. It's, it's a night at the bar where you just got paid, so you buy food at the bar instead of just beer. Sure, that's <laughs> yeah. that's cool. Because <laughs> the thing that happens like in this, that episode, which is, I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this is pretty clever. There's a part where uh, the food arrives at the table, mm-hmm. and oh. he opens it, and it's a squid, and Leto's like, oh, it's one of the bad aliens, and yeah. he like, freaks out. And he pulls he's, out his gun, and he's like about to shoot it. Yeah, he's about to shoot it, and everybody's like, it's a squid, dude. Bellows like, takes a bite, and she's like, calm down, man. Yeah, dude, it's like, not that big of a deal. Yeah. Like, calm shit. And that was good, because, at least for, for us, because we watched like the first three episodes, and then didn't watch the show for like a month mm-hmm. and when he's like ah oh, it's an alien i'm like right that's what the aliens look like right and they... that's important because at the end of the episode one of the aliens is there yeah and they're deep underwater and it's like oh shit like the aliens have been here yeah and um i, I like i don't think i would have quite been i would have been like no i think that's just a squid but it's like no they look very similar yeah and and like chamber and I guess Chamber wasn't around when he saw the octopus. Maybe he would have been like, "That's that's also one of them," because like yeah. maybe they sh- they share the same genus or whatever. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's it, Chamber says like chance it based on its energy readings, the chances are like ninety nine point nine seven percent that it is one of the Hideyos. and yeah. like oh shit, in this world untouched by war, the war has come to them. Or, yeah. or yeah. I guess he's going to continue it there or whatever. Time to fight the enemies of humanity. Yeah. yeah. And, like, this is this seems like a real, uh, like, fork in the road for him because, like, you know, the reason he's underwater with uh, with Bellows is because he's realized what he wants to do. Like, he's been spending the last couple of episodes trying to figure out, like, what's the job for me? What can I be good at? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And Bellows is like, hey, try salvaging with me. Like, it's a cool thing. You'll learn a lot more about this planet. Who knows what you'll find? Yeah. And he says, yeah, that sounds great. That's what I'm going to do. So he's, like, gone, he's starting down this new path of, like, I'm going to be a salvager. I'm going to contribute to this society and, like, earn my way and all this. And then he starts that, and he's face-to-face with his his original purpose oh, to kill yeah. these things. Yeah. No, that's, uh, that's even more clever than I was giving you there. <laughs> Damn. Episode six. Good job. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I thought that was, I thought that was, I thought it was, I thought it was a good moment. I thought it was a good touch. I yeah. had a feeling that that was going to be, like, the, the cliffhanger is, like, he's deep underwater. It's like, and then the alien show. Right. Then, so it's not, it's not like a huge twist, but it's like, it's good. It's, mm-hmm. it's well done. And especially now that you pointed it out in that context too, it's like, excuse me, that's pretty clever. I mean, I say it's like an impasse, but like, he doesn't hesitate. It's like, it is on site with this yeah, thing. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> nope, fuck this word, Bellas. I gotta kill this thing. Hang right. on. Right. Well, and it, it's funny too, because like the episode six ends on like a cliffhanger. Like, oh no, it's one of the aliens. Yeah. And it's like. It doesn't look that big. Like, I feel like he's just about to annihilate this thing. Like, it's like, oh, no. It's not even attacking or anything. Like, it's yeah. just swimming past, and he's like, nope, time to die. Like, I, I have a feeling that if I watch episode seven, it's just going to be immediately like, Pew. got <laughs> it. Like, no big deal. Yeah, quite likely. I expended point zero 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 one percent of my energy. Yeah, exactly. It's nothing. It's like, yeah. it's like swatting the fly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that's the show. That's what we watched. Problems and all. Yep. Um, so we have a rating system that we devised. Let's see if I can remember it. Um, it's keep watching. Mm-hmm. Eh. Total garbage. Yep. Um, In so many words. I don't remember the exact, but that's the... Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to fuck it up next time. Sure. But, it's um, going to change every time. So where do you where do you fall? I know you've seen it. Clearly, before, I fell on but, keep watching before. Yeah, but I think the first time I, I might have actually watched it all in one sitting. 
Oh, shit. Um, yeah. It's only like 15 episodes. It's, it's not I think like it's less great... than that. It's like 12. Oh, yeah? Let's see. Let's see. Oh, no, you're right. Uh, 15. Oh, th- but those are OVAs. So it's 13 I never watched and those. then two OVAs. Okay. Well, fuck. I didn't know there was more of it. Um, I mean, I still like it. I think it still occupies a kind of place in storytelling that doesn't exist anywhere else like an anime. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I, like... It visually it holds up very well. I think there is some really cool storytelling elements. Obviously, there's some stuff that is a little more unco- a little less comfortable with me at age 28 than it was at like age 20, 21. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, yeah, I still still like it. I would I would continue watching it. Yeah, um, I'm I'm leaning a little bit more towards eh. Sure. Like I don't think it's total garbage. I enjoyed what I saw. The animation is really good. Um, the yeah, like everything, like the world, the characters, all very cool. Um, y- you know, and as a guy who has zero oppression in his life, <laughs> the problematic stuff is problematic, but not to the point of like being a deal breaker sure. necessarily. Again, as a guy who has no oppression, I feel like I should <laughs> lay that one out there. Like, but uh, yeah, I, I kind of feel like if like there's a pretty good chance I'm never gonna watch episode seven. That's fair. Um, not that it's bad. If it sounds interesting to you, it's if you were at home, check it out. Yeah, it's 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 well done. I can't I really mean, argue that it's like I, I have a great reason. It just didn't stick with me. I've stuck with far less or like far worse as far as animes go. Yeah, like, you did. It didn't even have to be that good to keep my interest. Um, <laughs> so like, yeah, I think if the premise sounds interesting to you, if you like, you know neat animation and sci-fi slice of life type stuff in water. Like if you, if you want to see a, an anime slice of life version of water world, uh, with, <laughs> with a Mac, then here you go. That's yeah. your show. Yeah. Um, one Mac. Yeah. And I can go ahead and spoil it for you later if you want. Oh, yeah. uh, maybe. Okay. Maybe. Um, yeah. Cause I don't know. Cause I'm still like, I'm invested in what happened. I just, just know I, you I, can't I, find that 24 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I, well, exactly. Well, it's also like, there are so many shows that I need to watch. There's so much anime I need to watch. Like, I haven't... I'm behind on, like, the last, like, two or three seasons mm-hmm. of anime. Like, there's so many good shows that have come out. And sure. I'm just like, oh, yeah, I need to watch that. Like, there's one about a dude who has a gun for a head. And it looks sick. It's oh, like a detective. yeah. Uh, I watched a couple episodes of that. Is yeah. with you? No. No. Okay. That's fun. I've never seen any of it. It looks cool as hell. And I'm like, yeah, I need to watch it. So, I don't know. I think as long as shows like that exist, I need to... I need to finish Cop Crap. I need to finish <laughs> Cannon Busters. That's There's fair. so many other shows that I should be watching. I just downloaded um, Chainsaw Man from uh, from Shonen Jump. I don't think it's Shonen Jump. Maybe oh. it's not Shonen Jump. I don't know. It I, was on, I think it's on Shonen Jump. Okay, yeah. Because I, ha- I have... I mean, this is, this is a topic for another time. Sure. <laughs> I have been reading a shit ton of manga. Oh, lately, that's right. So. Uh, yeah, I have the Shonen Jump app, app. I even have the premium version. Oh, so. we pay, what, $4 for that bad boy? Uh... I mean, it's only two dollars, but you know. Oh, okay. Uh, so the premium version is two dollars. I thought the base version was two dollars. Yeah. Oh, no, okay. I, I, I mean, I have a version that is two dollars. <laughs> okay. I know that much. Um, <laughs> I have a Kindle, not a real tablet, and I don't like reading stuff on my phone, so can't can't get it yet, unfortunately. I mean, when when is Shonen Jump coming to Kindle? When this, is Shonen Jump coming to Kindle? This or, is our campaign. Or when am I gonna stop being a cheap piece of shit and get an actual tablet? Who knows? Or just buy the manga. Or, well, buy, buy media. I don't know. Uh, no, that's a good point. Yeah, why own things? <laughs> yeah, why would I own things? Everything's streaming. I just need it digitally spoon-fed to me. <laughs> yeah, I probably should, actually, just... Oh, it takes up so much physical space, It though. does, yeah. I mean, fucking... I got a little room. Yeah, my, my room's already filled up with, like, the few books that I own, so. You look, you... I walk into your room and you seem very, like, erudite until I look at the titles on your books. Well, so the ones... <laughs> the, yeah, the ones that are in English are uh, not the smartest books a lot of the time. And then, like, my, my shelf of manga over there is all hentai. Yeah, so yeah, it's just uh, all... I have... I mean, I have Jinji Ito. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. That's like the, That's kind of the smarter man's manga, I feel. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I'm hip. I'm cool. I like Jinji Ito. Yeah. It's I'm nothing. unique, whatever. You got three <laughs> you got three copies of Enter the Matrix on your bookshelf. Yeah. I'm collecting two them. PS2 copies and a GameCube one. Yeah, I thought it would be really fun to uh 
get people over and just speed run them all together and uh, just like like set up a bunch of TVs. No, that play. sounds great. When are we doing this? Well, it sounds great, except that the GameCube version is like significantly faster than the PlayStation. Oh, version. really? So whoever has the GameCube version is just, just gonna, gonna win. tear off. Yeah. Oh man! So um, we have to put like the most incompetent person on that one. Or, or give them, like, a handicap or, or you can judge by in-game timer, I think, because that probably won't... Well, I mean, it depends on the game, but a lot of in-game timers don't include load screens. Okay. Yeah. I mean, looks like we gotta do some Enter the Matrix I guess tests. so. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. we tried to do this with Sonic Generations. I was thinking about picking that back up the other day, or today. Yeah. 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 I, I, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm content with our... our I, and I, I may be only saying this because I got the... Yeah, you, you're currently winning on Green Hill. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I, I feel like I'm I don't have the lifespan to learn the whole game. Kind of same, yeah. Yeah, I might just pick it back up just to be your Green Hill score. Yeah, good fucking luck, dude. The, the time I sent you, I have other ones that I beat Fuck my off, time. Really? Yeah, and I'm just I was I assumed that you were immediately going to uh, <laughs> and the the tragedy and I'm it's gonna sound like I'm lying, so I probably am. Um, I took some pictures you and then I them. And, and I restarted the game so that I could see what it's like to play because I learned a couple of other levels. Right. So I restarted the game and um, just to see what it was like to try to run through those levels in sequence. Mm-hmm. Thus, got rid of my best time. Oh no! But I do still have a couple screenshots of better times than the last one I sent you. So. Well, send me your best one, and I'm gonna beat it. <laughs> All right, time to time to do some digging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Gargantia. Keep watching. Yeah. Say it's a it's so a solid, somewhere in between there. I know we don't use the out of ten score, but if I had to, it'd be a solid, solid, like solid seven, light eight, like yeah, pretty good, absolutely. worth your time. Not going to change your life probably, unless you are a space soldier who just wonders what it'd be like to kick it on a on a big ship. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's perfect. Yeah. That's absolutely yeah. Yeah. If that's you, check this out. <laughs> get your Netflix up. Get your, get your space Netflix going. <laughs> on your spaceship. Yeah. That'd be sick. Yeah. Uh, so next podcast, we are going to be watching... Keep Your Hands Off Azoken. Thank you. Yeah, I would have said that wrong. There we go. Um, or maybe it's just Hands Off Azoken. I don't know. Man, that one. We're going to be watching we're, that one. Everybody's watch been talking about it. Yeah. I, it looks fantastic. I get to watch an anime that's new, so... Uh, yeah, that'll, that'll be next week. So if you want to have a better understanding of what we're talking about, if our shitty descriptions did not do it for you, watch the first six episodes and then you can have opinions along with us. Yeah, the, the I, I think when we were first talking about this, we were kind of aiming for like a book club kind of thing. Yeah. And that, I mean, we're covering like a new thing every time instead of just like these chapters of a book. But like, yeah, if you want to watch along or if you've already seen it and want to have a chat about it, then... Well, we don't have any sort of online presence yet, but we'll figure that out we'll and get back out. to you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Hentai Pete Lord. And I'm at Bakfu, B-A-K-F-U-U. Yeah. And uh, that's going to be the main way, because I don't use any other social media. I have an Instagram. I don't look at it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can if you want more stuff, you can follow us there. Perfect. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. That's it. That's it. That's all the anime we got this week. Excellent. Good goodbye. Thanks for listening. <laughs> what a sign. Way to go. Hell yeah. Dude, you did hey. it you did it to it. You did it. You know Wait. you had to do it to him. <laughs>